and you can see um, this is just uh, the Binance uh, Binance website. You can see this interface right here, right? Uh, there's a lot of things right here. It looks very busy. You have like all these numbers here. You have like all these um, coins like BTC, USDT, and if you're looking at, at this for the first time, you may be confused. You may be wondering, okay, how do I look at this? But before we start, we want to uh, we we want to um, load up some money first, right? Load up some crypto first. So assuming that you have crypto from an on-ramp already, you can send it over. Uh, for my case, I'm going to be sending from, I'm going to be sending it over from um, a wallet. I do have like a browser wallet. Um, this is under, uh, this is called Tron Link. So I have some Tron coins. Um, for some of you guys, you may have Bitcoin. Some of you may have Litecoin. Uh, and to better understand this, um. I'm working with I'm working with uh, Tron coins right here, right? You can see right here I have a uh, 500 Tron for this uh, example. This is 500 Tron, um, right? It's worth about 23, almost 24 dollars. I'm gonna send this over right to Binance. But now the question is, okay, who's the receiving account? You go on Binance, and then you scroll down to the coin, right? You search for the coin. For my case, it's Tron. I look up Tron. And you notice um, how does that Tron, Tron down, Tron up? Uh, the other two, you don't have to worry about. These are more for like shorting and margin play, right? But for my case, I want I have Tron. I want to send Tron over. And then you get to this page. It's called the deposit page, right? And the big thing you want to keep an eye out for is this part. You have like BEP2, you have an ERC20, and you have like TRC. 20. And if you don't understand this, um, it's okay because um, a lot of people don't get that in the crypto space, you have different chains. Uh, think of it as um, different currencies, right? Different currencies or different um, formats of the same coin. So Tron, um, they can be in on the Tron network. It can be on the Ethereum network or it can be on uh, the Binance network uh, because uh, the Tron I have is from the Tron network, I'm using the Tron network address. And notice that every time I switch to a different one, they have a different, they have a different address, right? So if you see the, uh, an address starting with zero X, that's usually an Ethereum based address. But for um, Tron, right? I have this address, I can copy it and go over here. I'm gonna send some Tron, I'm gonna send um, so this is um, it says it has not been activated because um, Binance um, set up a new account for me, right? Just for receiving. So I'm going to do uh, 499 Tron. I'm saving one Tron behind for transaction fees, and then I can send. And they'll ask me, "Are you sure you want to send this address?" Uh, before I send, I always check, right? That receiving address, right? T H L J K. Look at it. Okay, T H L J K, and then the last six E B B X Y Y. Same thing. E B B or B B X Y Y, right? Everything looks good, and I press accept, and then you'll see that the Tron is on its way. You'll see that right here. Uh, Four hundred ninety nine Tron is on its way to Binance, and this is the part where it gets a bit scary because oh, you don't know. You don't know whether um, like it's gonna arrive. I know the first time when I sent like crypto around, I, I get scared. I wonder, oh no, I, am I going to get it? And usually, uh, my recommendation is you always send like a small amount first. Like send maybe like a dollar first to make sure that the address you just copy here is correct. If it goes through, then you can send the rest of the payment. Some people may do like two or three or four separate payments, but. There has been times you may you may have seen on the news that like some a whale may send like 500 bitcoin in one transaction and pay only like a dollar for the transaction fee but so this is just um like so this is the, the tense moment and usually i just uh, press like refresh just to see like has the transaction been received on the binance side and you can see right here right deposit history tron 499, the amount that we just sent has been received on uh, the Binance end. So we know that, so we can, um, yeah, we can uh, breathe a sigh of relief knowing that our token is in, 
is finally with uh, Binance and we can start having fun with it. So, yeah, so let's take a look at some of the comments and what people are saying. Yeah, you plan on doing so, yeah. Yeah, transfer to your code wallet and you can touch it, yeah. There are some fees about when it comes to transferring back and forth and I, my recommendation is to always have like a code wallet and then you have a hot wallet. And then whatever, whenever you interact with, uh, yeah, whenever you interact with a change, just interact with the hot wallet to keep, um, to ensure your privacy. And then six blockchain cycle to confirm safely. I think for, I think for Tron, because Tron is a very fast network, right? They have a new block, like I believe it's either every second or every other second. Um, one transaction is enough for Binance to confirm that the transaction has been made. So now we can take a look at, um, go here, right? So we can uh, go here, take a look at markets and you may notice that um, there are different pairs, right? You have like, you have like BTC, you have like different coins that got BTC and DLT. Um, you know, uh, DLT is polka dot, right? And then you could also notice that um, you also notice that you have a like DLT and BNB. So if you don't know what a trading pair is, a trading pair is basically like two different coins. Um, it's an it's an it's a it's a dedicated page where you can trade between one coin to the other. Right. For this case, it's between Polkadot and BNB. You can also change like between them. You also see like other format. You have like DOT and USDT. You have DOT and BTC. You have like a DOT and, well, they'd have, um, they don't have ETH, DOT and ETH, but, but you can see on there are different pairs, right? And before you place a trade, it's always important to know like, what are the two coins you're working with, right? Uh, for our case, we have a lot of Tron at the moment. And if we want to have some fun, we probably it's probably a good idea to convert it all to BTC. So at least we have a certain standard to work with. Yes, uh, what Goff said, it's like Forex. Yeah, it is like Forex. Uh, you have different coins, different currency. It's like different currency. In fact, I mean, they call it cryptocurrency in the first place. So for our case, um, to make it easy, we're going to um, sell all of our Tron. Remember, we started off with 499 Tron. We're going to sell it all, sell all of them to uh, BTC so that we have something to work with. So if um, when it comes to placing an order, notice that you have um, on the right side of your Binance Exchange account, you have limit and you have market. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, um, um, yeah, on most exchanges, or, le or at least some um, online on um, crypto to crypto exchanges, you have the option of placing an order at whatever the price it is, right? Um, whatever price um, I guess the market is going at. So you can see that um, right now the market rate is about like uh, 96 Satoshi, right? If you do, if you, if I press sell Tron right now, I'm selling all my Trons at 96 Satoshi each. If I don't like the price, I can actually set the price to something like, oh, I don't like this price. Maybe I want to sell it at like a hundred Satoshi, right? At least make like four Satoshi more per Tron. And this is a way you can actually place some um, sell orders at different regions so that if the price of your coin goes up, it'll auto sell at that point. So, but for our case, uh, we want Bitcoin right now. We want to have Bitcoin right now to play with. So we're gonna sell it at the market rate. Um, it may not be like, if you look at the hourly candle, we did have a small run up uh, since, I guess um, since this morning. So we are in a fair position to sell, but you can see that um, I put a hundred percent and I press sell and then I sell. And you notice that uh, there are two pop-ups, right? It's just said like, congratulations, you sold your Tron for BTC. So now we have some BTC to play with. It's not a lot. It's about like a, like a, I'm probably have to convert it all, but um, it's like about like a, like $40, $50 we're working with, but that's enough for this demo, right? For what are you doing? And yes, 
uh, Golf just asked, is BNB considered a stable coin? No, uh, BNB is the token on the Binance network. Um, so they are actually um, the house coin for the Binance exchange. And they do have a price. Uh, currently, the price of BNB is about $250. Um, if you want to know what is the stable coin, um, which I think is maybe a good idea to go quickly go over too, right? Um, a stable coin is a coin that is pegged one to one to the dollar, or at least as close to the dollar. So you have tokens like a uh, USDT, which is US dollar tether. You have a uh, BUSD, which is a uh, Binance version of the USDT, and then you have like a bunch of other one like uh, TUSD, which is like True USD, and so you have uh, all these um coins right that were they claim that they are pegged one to one to the US dollar and the main benefit for using a stable coin right is if you believe that uh Bitcoin is about to drop you feel that I'm um, like whatever token right uh it's about to drop and you want to hold on to the value in US dollar right, at a position before it drops that's one way you can do that uh, you can uh, convert it over to you can convert it over to tether so that you do have um on paper the value like of uh in us dollars uh, but you have to know that this is not us dollar it's just a uh, stable coin right um, you can always convert it to us dollar um, later on like whether at an exchange or at a peer-to-peer -peer, right but but the fees for transitioning and transact uh, turning like your Bitcoin to a stable coin is a lot cheaper than let's say sending it over to an off ramp, right? Sending it to like Coin Mama and turning it back to US dollars. And usually, when you work with an, with an on ramp, they charge between like five to like 15 percent. And if you can get the same effect if the point of um, going into onto stablecoin is to um, lock in your value, right? To take profit so that you can redeploy later on. It's way cheaper to just switch to a stablecoin so that you can and so that you can redeploy it later on. So like for some people, they would have like start turning their Bitcoin. So this is a chart of Bitcoin. You notice how uh, Bitcoin uh, is going up. And if you recall, uh, since this weekend it started dumping, right? So you can imagine some people would, would have been like turning, I'm uh, selling the Bitcoin for USDT like around this area at around like 55 to 60K. And then um, after this big dump, they they would take the USDT they have and start buying back, right? At like 40K, 48K, 44K and be ahead. And I always tell people, right? I'm like, don't send your... Don't send your like uh, your Bitcoin to an off ramp to turn it back to US dollars. I mean, sometimes it's just better to just switch it to a tether, send it to send it to your uh, hardware wallet uh, if if you're planning on keeping for long term. But usually, when you're in tether, you are you are planning on uh, making a quick trade. You are making a quick trade to tether and then switching back to Bitcoin shortly after. Yeah, so so it looks like I'm um, a lot of you guys are starting to are finding it helpful. I start to get um like the point of tether and stable coins. Yeah, and yeah, a lot of people love stable coins because of that reason. Like traders love that. Like instead of paying like five percent, ten percent, you're paying like zero point one percent, zero point one percent, and even cheaper if you're using like a a community referral code and. But also, it's important to note that every time you turn Bitcoin to Tether, it is a taxable event, meaning uh, whatever you switch it to, um, you do have to record it. And once you record it, right, you may have uh, taxes payable. So it's important to keep note of that. And and then um, let's see um, if you want to. And then let's take a look at some of the community questions. Um, for a growth strategy where you want to increase the total position of base currency, will the quote currency already deplete the same rate? Um, <clears throat> so it comes down to um, what you're acquiring. Um, so someone was asking about like how for growing. Um, like when you're swapping back and forth. Um, like will you deplete? Um. 
it comes down to um the comes down to the main uh, the currency you're keeping track of, right? Um, so um in the crypto space, um, there are there usually two currencies you use as like a base, right? If you're trading between Bitcoin, if you're trading between Bitcoin and uh, USDT, then uh, obviously USDT is the base currency you compare Bitcoin to. But if you're working with an altcoin like uh, Cardano, ADA, right? ETH. Uh, Uniswap, right? Any token. Right? Generally, it's probably a good idea to use uh, Bitcoin as the base token because you're in Bitcoin already. And sometimes, uh, whenever you take a position in an altcoin, right, you are hoping that this coin will grow faster than Bitcoin. So it would make more sense to use Bitcoin as uh, the base currency to compare. So that so that way, uh, if it grows, right? Um, so let's. Let's, for this case, look, let's look at uh, Uniswap, right? Uni token, right? You compare it to uh, Bitcoin. You want to make sure that uh, like, uh, the comparison token, which is Uni, right? Is increasing against Bitcoin value. So you can see this is a Uni to BTC. The higher uh, the candle, uh, the price goes, means, uh, means uh, uh, the more valuable Uniswap is compared to Bitcoin. And you, when you're in an altcoin position, you want the altcoin to grow faster than Bitcoin, because otherwise there's no point for you to go to an altcoin. <laughs> and yeah, and that's how you uh, maximize your gains. And and then um, Dave has a question: um, Would you maximize gain by having a trading pair where one is one is pumping while the other is dumping? Um, it depends on what your strategy is because um, sometimes it may be advantageous to have a coin that is pumping while other coins are dumping. Maybe um, Bitcoin happens to be dumping, but you happen to have a coin that goes uh, inverse to Bitcoin, or at least um, it is it ha it's still growing because of certain fundamental reasons. And we have noticed that um, for uh, this week alone, right? Despite uh, Bitcoin dumping, Cardano ADA has continued uh, growing. In fact, it has a uh, it has um, re uh, surpassed um, surpassed um, one of the highest points. Um, so yeah, th this is something to note. And yes, yeah, sometimes if you are if you are planning on accumulating Bitcoin, right? And if you are in a coin that is growing, and even a Bitcoin is dumping, you are, you can consider yourself ahead because at any moment you can switch it back to Bitcoin, and you would have been better ahead than the person who's just hodling Bitcoin, All right? And so yeah, so now um we figure out um a lot of some of this, uh, a lot of these basics. Uh, let's let's have some fun with um, with uh, buying and selling positions. So if you guys have a Binance account, um, it would be a great idea to pull it up, um, open it up. And I'm going to go over some of some of the key, um, I guess some key interfaces that you should keep, in, you should uh, at least know like, how they work. Otherwise, you are no different than, uh, than someone who doesn't know anything It's blindly buying. So um, on, you can see this box right here, right? This is known as um, the order book. Yep, do not share your bi personal Binance account. Yep, that's why I have a demo account. And if you guys are using um, the community referral code, you are like adding to the community account. So yeah, so you can see this box right here, right? This box right here is uh, the, this box right here is uh, the order book. You can see that um, it's a list of all the like all the orders on Binance right now. So you can see there's a lot of people who are like who have um sell orders, right? From here, you have people who say that I'm I'm willing to let go of my ADA if Bitcoin goes up to this price, right? Uh 2070 sets, right? And then and you have like uh less going down. And then on the other side, you have people who are willing to buy. They have set an order, they say that. If Bitcoin ever drops down to let's say um, twenty fifty two, I will buy ninety one thousand of ADA. <laughs> so, so uh, this is just a quick uh, example of what it look, uh, what this uh, these two boxes are. Right, it's just a list of people, list of users 
who are willing to buy or sell at different prices. And usually where they meet, um, a transaction occurs. And of course, uh, right now, um, Cardano is like pretty still at about like six, uh, 2061, 2062 right at the moment. So suppose uh, you want to get in on ADA right now, right? Um, one way you can do it is do it through the market price. But suppose you believe that um, Cardano is a bit hot, uh, you don't want to go in right away, right? Maybe you want to buy a bit right now and then buy the rest later on like, as if the price drops. So one way you can do that is you can set a price, right? So for this case, um, for this case, um, I'm using this indicator is known as the Bollinger Band. So you have uh, the top of the band and the bottom of the band. You also have a uh, you also have like a support line, right? This is like a moving average line, right? So let's say I'm um, right now, I feel that um, Cardano compared to BTC is a bit high. And I feel that I'm, I'm more comfortable buying it in uh, if it ever dips down to 1800, I can set an order for 1800. You sure you don't want you don't want to set at eighteen hundred. You want to do like do like eighteen ten, right? Because you don't want to have the whole number bias. A lot of people they like to put orders at like perfect numbers, like hundreds, thousands. Right? Always add in a bit more so that your order can get taken up. Because the worst thing is you have a buy order somewhere here, but and the, your coin drops just. Like just uh, maybe like five sats away and you miss out on that uh, buying in. So for this case, um, let's say I'm going to buy, uh, you can set like 75%, 100% in your BTC. For this case, let's, let's do 20 Cardano. Let's set up a buy order for 20. And then, and then you just press this buy order right here. And you'll see, and you'll see, uh, on the open orders box. So this is the open orders box, right? And um, you see all the orders I place, right? But these orders have not been processed yet because the price hasn't been met yet. All right? So you can see this order right here says, I'm willing to buy if it drops down to 1810. And so this is how you can set up an order. All right? uh, so that um, if it drops, if it dips, you 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 have an auto fill order. There are pros and cons to it. The pro to it is um, you don't have to buy at the, the current rate right now, right? And if the price of Cardano drops against Bitcoin, you, you can get in at a discount. And some people may actually ladder different uh, buy orders. So let's say you have, you think that it could drop even more. Maybe you think that's going to drop to like 70 cents, right? You can put in another buy order, right? You can do this by putting a little buy order right here. Right, and you, and I just put in another buy order right here. So one order at um, 1810, another at 1410, and maybe I think it's gonna drop under a thousand, right? I'm gonna do like 999 right here. If if it drops to under a thousand to um, 50 cents, I can put in another order right here too. And then I can do like uh, another order for 12. And then you can see right here. So then you can see that um, right, what you see here is a ladder, right? You can see a ladder of buy orders. So instead of buying it all at 2000 and 2055, I have a bunch of buy orders, such that if it drops, if it drops, and if it meets any of these, uh, I guess, uh, prices, it'll, uh, that buy order gets triggered. And if it drops to um, 999, then I'm buying it at a very big discount. And this is one way you can um, dollar cost average your way into a coin. Um, dollar cost average doesn't mean, necessarily mean like, oh, you buy you buy like every month, right? It can also be like, uh, you can also, uh, you can also uh, average across the prices instead of average across the time. So this is one way you can like get into a coin uh, at a discount. So, so yeah, any, feel free to, um, post any questions. Um, if you have any questions then feel free to post in the chat, um, but this is just one example of how to get, like get into a uh, coin. And then, um, likewise, um, we can also, I'm just going to cancel all these orders right now. Um, so, 
So yes, yeah, some um, Aaron just asked, is selling ADA to BTC a taxable event? Yes, um, it is a taxable event, uh, ADA. And yeah, whenever you do, you switch from one crypto to another crypto, um, for most jurisdictions, it is a taxable event. Uh, um, you have to check, you have to check your jurisdiction to see about that. And then, um, okay, I noticed that one of our mentors, uh, Robert, wants to say something. And so I'm just going to mute him to add in a comment. Okay, so and then Dave asked him the question about uh, is it dangerous to ladder the limit on ShakePay? So ShakePay is an on ramp. So is it a different different situation? Um, I can't speak too much on that. Um, my my recommend. I guess um, how I use uh, shake, uh, on ramps is um, I usually just convert it straight to Bitcoin and then send it all over to an exchange or to a wallet first. And and when I and then I just do my buy and sell orders using the exchange because I believe that you, I believe that you are, um, I believe you are also paying like a uh, you, you're paying a lot in like a fixed um, fee like when you're using shake pay. And then um, Daphne said, uh, "Stable coin to dollar is not a taxable event. Uh, um, it depends. It depends. But usually, it, I mean, it is a taxable event. But you're not really like making any gains, right? If you're switching a thousand dollar, a thousand uh, USDT to a thousand stable coin. So like, you are not gain, incurring any capital gains. So it's technically taxable, but you don't have anything to tax you on. So." So yeah, so and then um, I think uh, Robert, you want to share something or? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, if you don't mind, if I can share my screen, uh, it helped clarify uh, something that was mentioned in the chat. But basically, yes, uh, it, every transaction is a taxable event. You just got to be careful. Uh, some stable coins, uh, which are basically just the most popular ones, uh, that they've proven themselves over time. You know, they've tested the, I guess, long term, which is ten years. They've been around. Um, then yeah, then they they're more solid. They're more likely to stick around still. Um, but uh, yeah, you should I'm be able to share a screen now, Robert. Uh, Sorry, you should be able to share a screen. Yeah, now. yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. So basically, uh, just to clarify one of the questions earlier we had, which was about the base currency. So I have here you can see uh, this is now in forex, but it's the same as crypto trading, cryptocurrencies, or just. Trade uh, monetary currencies, they always trade in pairs. So you can see here, you've got the Euro and USD. So the first one is always the base currency. And the second one is the quoted currency. Uh, you don't have to get too caught up on that and get confused. Just know that yes, they do move inversely to one another. So when you have the Euro going up, the US dollar going down and opposite. Uh, if you look closely in between the pair, you always have this little slash. What that represents is basically if you've ever seen a seesaw and, you know, as this goes down, this one goes up. So this little triangle in the middle, that's equivalent of that slash in the middle. So they move inversely to one another. So to answer two questions at the same time, uh, yes, when one goes up, the other goes down. Therefore, if let's just say the U.S. dollar were to crash big time, even if the euro didn't do anything special now, you need a lot more of those much cheaper dollars to buy the same amount of euros. So therefore, this would have gone up. Now, if you're looking at a chart, right, and the chart is going up, that means that the first currency on the left of the pair is the one that is going up, okay? And that means that the US dollar is getting cheaper at the same time. Uh, conversely, if the chart is going lower, that means, again, the one on the left, which is the euro, is the one that's dropping in value. And we don't really, really even need to talk about the US dollar going up in value when we're looking at a chart of the euro. So, yes, we can find, uh, you know, which, which one is more likely to go up, which one is more likely to go down. If we look at some indicators, uh, that's something that I think uh, I'm going to be sharing more next week with you guys uh, or in two weeks. But uh, definitely you can see here that uh, there's different things to look out for. It's definitely valuable to learn how to trade 
in general, uh, because when you learn how to trade Forex or cryptos or stocks or gold or indices, they're all the same, how they work, how they behave, how they move. All the indicators are the same. All the candles are the same. All the indicators and patterns are the same. So in this particular slide I had up here, yes, I was teaching someone how to trade Forex, talking about the major pairs, minor pairs, uh, how to calculate the pips and the, you know, the quotes. It's a little bit different than cryptocurrencies, but uh, that's something we can touch on uh, perhaps next time. And the most important thing is that you can actually make money whether things are going up or things are going down. Most people don't even realize that they're always asking, what should I buy rather than what's a good trade, both to the upside or to the downside, because sometimes things fall faster than they can go up. And if things call, can fall faster, you know, pretend something went up for 10 years and then it drops in one year. Chances are you can make 10 years of profit in just a single year, right? So that's something that is uh, important to note. Uh, and there's different types of entries. So, you know, what Ed was talking about uh, right now, he was showing a buy limit order. He was waiting for the price to uh, go down first before he would buy it. Um, so basically here you can see an example of a buy limit order. We have the price right here, but he mentioned, I want the price to come down to here first before it'll buy. Even while I'm sleeping, he executed the order, but he didn't actually enter the trade. Uh, once you're in the trade, though, from that price is where he will make profit to the upside. So uh, that's an example of a buy limit order. If it doesn't go that low, then it will just simply never enter that price. If it never touches that price, even if it goes back up, he's not in that trade. So that's just a quick example of some of the stuff, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we can be sharing. It's important to learn how to trade stocks, indices, commodities, gold, silver, oil, Forex and crypto together in the same boat. Then you've got economic data, central banks, policies, and news. Everything is coinciding together. For example, today we had the central bank, some big news, massive news. And this is for crypto too. You know, the, there was basically an outage at the central bank for three hours. Interbank connectivity. This is historic. This should be talked about all over the news today. Uh, you know, three hours. If it was five minutes, it would have been catastrophic. Three hours, though, you know, I've actually seen several times throughout the last couple of decades I've traded where there was just a 15 minute interruption in the NASDAQ and things went back to normal, like a power outage or something. And it was suspicious for me how those 15 minutes behaved. And guess what happened? The following day, we had a 5% correction or sorry, crash in the stock market based on something weird going on. I'm almost willing to say something bad is about to happen because uh, for the traditional markets, which would benefit cryptocurrencies, because if you have, let's say, a big meltdown, I'm not saying there's going to be one tomorrow, but I wouldn't be surprised if this next week is going to be some panic because, you know, it's you've heard you've heard about this talk about about a great reset. And this has to do with the, the currency system and also the banking system. Now, it's almost fishy to me today, the banking system not operating for three hours is pretty much how long it would take to kind of implement a new system, like maintenance for a website. You actually have maybe converting over to a new system. You can only do one bank at a time, but they seem to maybe have had an opportunity today to switch over without telling anyone something's going on. So they might have done that on purpose then that's really, really pay attention. What's going to be happening to the markets over the next 30 days is not going to be typical what you've seen before. Uh, and I've usually made bold predictions like this and crazy th stuff ended up happening. Now also, okay. uh, yeah. if it was by yeah. accident, if it was just random, that's also concerning just as badly because we have, that means that they don't have control over the system. What can prevent it from happening again tomorrow? So people should panic sell just based on that either way. So but anyway, uh, what Ed was talking about, uh, dollar cost averaging, not buying all your yeah. position at once at the very beginning, scaling in, putting 25% of your money right. in this example, another 25%, another 25%, another 25%. Even though you're wrong on the initial direction, you wanted it to go up, it went down, you actually ended up making money. So it's all about not necessarily being perfectly accurate all the time, but also you want to just make sure that you're profitable. 
right? Because at the end of the day, you need to be looking at technical analysis, fundamental analysis, uh, geopolitical analysis, and sentimental analysis. They're all valuable. They're all stuff to not ignore. A lot of traders out there will say, oh, I only do price action. I don't need to know what the fundamentals are. Well, it's not true. You want to make an informed decision by taking in as much as possible. So, uh, but that's pretty much I have for today because I know Ed has a lot of questions to go over here, but I hope that helps answer the question that if one of the currencies drops like crazy, yes, that does benefit the base currency to go up more easily in value simultaneously. All right, thanks Robert. Um, just, yeah, so this is just a quick, uh, I guess, uh, demo of uh, what Robert will be sharing um, at the next meeting. but. Yeah, but um, yeah, to con to continue on with uh, what we promised for this meeting, um, we, we want to make this uh, more of a hands-on thing. Um, you can see that I'm um, like, in order to be a good trader, like you need to understand like both uh, the uh, both uh, the fundamental, technical, and also the hands-on part. And Robert will most definitely cover uh, the fundamental side, how to like uh, what to look for, and also uh. And also how to do the charting side to spot patterns of weaknesses. And for this session, my goal is to make sure that um you will have uh, you'll get understanding and know how to um like how to pull the trigger right, when it's time to pull the trigger, right? When you see spot a good trade. So let's go back to um to the chart right here for BDC USDT. Um, do you remember what Robert was showing? He showed that um there you also you have you can buy in. But, but also you also want to ladder your exit too, right? Um, he, he uses the term take profit. And and in the crypto space, it's very important that whenever you are whenever you are ahead, you always want to take profit, right? Even and and I know I'm a lot, you may be worried that oh, what if I take profit too early, right? What if uh, well the better question to ask yourself is what if you take profit too late? Because um Bitcoin goes around goes up and down in cycles. And if you look at this chart, I, this was the chart from 2017. Uh, Bitcoin went up all the way to 20K and then um, people were holding onto it. They didn't take profit. They may have bought in at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. And they, ro they rode it to the top and they rode it all the way to the bottom to like 3,000. And some, some people back here, right? They may have sold their Bitcoin thinking that, oh, this must be the end. And and it's always a good idea to take profit, right? To tell yourself that if Bitcoin gets to a certain position in that area, I'm going to maybe like take like 5%, 10%, right? You don't have to close everything. You can just take so that you can actually um, start enjoying your, your like, yeah, your, the fruits of your, your hodling, right? Um, and I'm going to show you how to um, set um, like sell order, right? Especially um, like take profit position. And for this example, um, this is just for like, like a short term position, right? Because if you have long term positions, um, I don't really recommend them. Um, I don't really recommend um, like putting all your coins on the exchange. Good. Okay, so so yeah, so let's talk about um. Looks like you guys are starting to talk about nibbling and such, and yeah, this is some um, one tip profit strategy. Um, I we. Like some some of us do utilize. So suppose um suppose um let's say for let's go back to the case of uh Bitcoin and Cardano. Right? Let's say we buy some Cardano at the, right now, right BTC ADA. Let's say we buy some Cardano. Uh, as this is just a demo, I'm just going to buy like maybe about like hmm, I don't think we have twenty Cardano anymore. <laughs> But whatever we can afford um, with our our account. But let's yeah. But let's say um you do have some Cardano and you you believe that Cardano is going to start taking off. It's going to surpass uh, the price of Bitcoin, and it's going to keep growing by like two x, three x, ten x, twenty x, whatever. Right? You can actually set some buy orders or not buy orders, sell orders to exit your position. So for this case, um, you can. First case, let's say uh, we're going to buy. Uh, let's let's buy let's say um twenty Cardano, right? Just for this example, um, buy twenty Cardano. We 
Biden at 20. Don't think that was a good. Don't think that was a good uh, price to buy at because this look. You can see right here, twenty forty seven. Right, right now the price is trading at twenty sixty seven. So in order for this order to be taken up, it has to drop down to forty seven. So for this example, we we're just going to say that we're going to buy. We're going to buy uh, this uh, by fifty percent. In Cardano, and then we can set us. Uh, so we just bought some Cardano right here. We have about 10 ADA, which is fine. We can nibble away, like into uh, take profit, right? So let's say we believe that uh, Cardano is going to uh, 10x, right? It's going to go from 2,000 sats to 20,000 sats. It may be a good idea to set some sell orders at like, 30,000 sats, right? You can sell like uh, 10%, right? 10%, right? You can sell one sats, right? You can set another sell order, right? And, and the next thousand, right? At this point, you do uh, this uh, ADA would have like two weeks already. You can set another one maybe at like uh, 6,000, right? This is by the time it free exits. It will set, yeah, you have another sell order. Okay, so someone's talking about like Bollinger. Um, that we can probably cover a bit uh, later, but um, for, but yeah, but you can see uh, that one indicator I have right here is, um, you can see this line right here and this line right here, and they form like a channel, right? So this is known as the Bollinger Band. And this, uh, uh, this indicator, it's uh, it's basically uh, the standard deviation of the price right? that of um, the price and the volatility. So it is using the volatility and um, the and the price to determine the top and the bottom of the channel. And this information allows us to know that um whether a certain you can see right here right um the Bollinger Band I said. Usually when it gets to the top, it starts to bounce back up. But this is um, what uh, this, but these are all probability because sometimes um, it may be at the top, uh, it may get to the top and it keeps going up and it forms like a new, like it keeps hugging the top, right? And the top, be, uh, it keeps growing as well too. So this is something um, to be aware of um, just because it gets to the top doesn't get, mean that it's guaranteed at the top. But yeah, as Robert said, um, this is more for advanced trading. Um, there are some people who do uh, trade. Um, they do do like a like minute trading or like hour hourly trading at the Bollinger level, where like they can set this to like five minute or one minute chart, and whenever it gets to like the bottom of the channel, they buy, and then when it gets to the top, they sell for like a, a small, let's say, um, like five percent profit or ten percent profit. Right, but but this is more like for advanced trading. And we don't really recommend doing this type of trading unless you understand and you have uh, the risk to stomach, uh, like stomach and all. all right. But maybe in the future, um, if if we have uh, more people who are, as uh, we are more familiar with uh, trading, we become more better at it. Like we can do like a, we can do like a trade together session where we can like look at, we can all study um, different pairs and if we see like uh, if we see a pair let's say for the, a pair like this right you notice that this pair is at the top and it's about to break out right we can all like jump in together right so you can see it's, it's in the bottom is about to come up right because it's near the bottom of the band and it bounces up right we could look do something like this together in the future um i think i think it's pretty fun i'm i've there are like I've been part of groups where we do something like this, uh, and every like every few nights, uh, once a week, we meet up, and for two to three hours, we look at charts and we see something that's about to break up or about to bounce off the bottom Bollinger. We buy in. So yeah, so feel free to share any other questions. Um, I think I've covered a bit about like how to buy in and how to nibble your way out, right? How to plan your way out, and oh, also another thing I want to share too, right? It's uh, 
uh, is keeping track of your crypto. I know some people ask about like uh, what what are some ways to keep track of your transactions and for tax purposes, it's always a good idea to keep track, right? Uh, I use something called I basically use some Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can use you can use an app, but um, depending on what uh, software you use, um, you are giving access to your trading account. And depending on um, how how comfortable you are, some people aren't comfortable. I'm not comfortable with uh, letting someone else see my trades, but uh, that's why I use this right to know how much uh, taxes I owe. But you can see um, this this example, right? I have my different coins. Um, I keep track of the value. I keep track of the quantity. Right? Uh, for the example we just did, right? We just did an order for, we bought ADA at this amount, 2,073 sats. We can do this, uh, we, we bought it at 2,073 sats. How much do we, I mean, how, what quantity? We bought 10. So we do, uh, quantity 10 and then also it's always a good idea to write down like what's going in your mind right so maybe for our case uh logically i wouldn't buy in uh, seeing how it's at the top like near the top of, for ada for near the top of the bollinger and it's also at close to like all-time high if not um i believe another not all-time high yet because um, ada was um way higher back in 2017 but compared to what we have been getting in the last couple of years right it is um near the top right near the top um Still a double to resistance resistance. right now so it's actually not a good place to... yeah but but for this case we're buying in let's just say we can also put down my like, thoughts like it's okay to say that FOMO right sometimes um it's always a good idea to keep track of your emotions so that if you do get, if you do get wrecked later on, you can look at your trading log and see, oh, I bought in this position because I was formoing in, right? Uh, formoing, formoing new, um, like closed or like after bounce off. Uh, for in this case, um, for eight. I mean, yeah, eighteen hundred satoshis. So you can say formal bounce off 1800 sat, right? So, so later on, if it doesn't go well, or even if it goes well, you know like why you bought into this position, right? And this is how you keep track of trades, right? And you, yeah, see right here. Oh, actually not 1800, 1500, 1600, 15, 1600. So you just put like 1600 sats. So this is just one way to keep track, right? There's also another way to keep track, uh, which is um, another spreadsheet I have. Right, for the same thing right here, 10, let's write down everything here. I might, you want to write down like the amount you bought in, uh, your entry price, quantity. And for this spreadsheet, I put down like your stop loss, like it'll automatically calculate your stop loss, right? So you, just, you want to say that I'm, I want to stop loss. I want to sell if it drops uh, by twenty percent, right? Of if it two exists, like hundred percent ROI, take out fifty percent. So at this point, I would be at break even, right? And then everything from here on, right? Everything from take prop after take hundred percent. I'm just uh, playing with the house's money. And if it goes to like uh, if a free exit, it'll t like I get to take like twenty five percent, and then if it goes to four hundred, I close my position completely, and it'll tell me all these stuff, right? It'll tell me um take position price um like this is uh four thousand one hundred sats, right? And I can go here, input that number. And then I'll just say, um, I'll put this amount, sell ADA. And then it should set a sell order right here. And then I can go to uh, take profit number two, which is uh, when it free exits from my buy-in position. Right, and I can do like, I'm um, sell to Cardano. 
and boom, another one right here. So the thing you want to note is uh, whatever ADA you have here, they are on the exchange, meaning if anything happens to Binance, right? even though in the past uh, they were able to pay people back, uh, if they suffer a major hack, they may not be able to recover everybody's funds because I believe from Binance, they are paying out of their own pocket. Right? They're paying out of their own like transaction fees pocket. And and if they suffer an attack where they lose, let's say, um, like a significant amount of the coins, right? They may not be able to pay, reimburse everybody. So that is a risk you have to be aware of. And sometimes if you are expecting like a big, if you're expecting the coin to go up that high, it may be easier to set, uh, to give yourself like a, an alert instead, right? You can use this calculator and then you can set alerts on your app so that it'll send you a reminder or send you alerts that, oh, uh, Cardano has reached a free X point. And then from there, after receiving alert, you can send your Cardano, your coin over to Binance and proceed to selling them. So this is, yeah, and then the spreadsheet is something I will, I will be sharing with you guys uh, by email. And yeah, so this is just some uh, long-term position, right? And in the future, we may even do like, uh, when we, we want to try, uh, try like uh, trading on the Bollinger Band, right? This is another, you can also use the same chart for this too, right? You, you enter a position and you tell yourself if it, drops um, this only this only works if the coin is very volatile right if you it's very volatile and it's at the bottom of the band right so this is on let's say the three minute five right? it's very volatile it's at the bottom of the band you buy in like, let's say for this case right we bought in right here right we bought in at 2034 right and let's say we bought in at 2034 Right, it'll tell us um, when to sell, right? It'll tell us when to sell. For this case, it would be, I believe there should be a lot more. Right, you can set a sell order. No, not sell order, but um, stop limit. You can sell like, a, you can set a stop loss, like stop limit order, meaning if the price drops to this level and you sell it. And for that, and, and you know, then later on, it will also give you like take profit positions right so when to start taking profits and for this case all right 30 30 51 and 40 68 and 50 whatever amount you think right sometimes i mean may, you may just be like playing for like smaller gains you may be playing for like 20 percent and 30 percent right and so this is just one example of like a short-term trade, but which we can go over in more details if people more if you guys are more interested in like short-term trading, uh, we can probably go into that. Maybe even Robert can um, tell some of his uh, tricks of his trade. Sure, Ed. Also, we have people asking about can they get a copy when of this Excel? To, like, uh, people would like to know if yeah. there's a possibility so everything, to get a copy of this Excel. Everything is recorded. On so if you if you join. Uh, if you join using, if you join Zoom, uh, you, if you're part of Zoom and you provide your email address and you got, you got a, a confirmation email to this link, which all you should be, uh, I will be sending out a follow-up email with uh, Excel sheet. So you guys will be getting a copy uh, of that and you can use it as you like. Uh, but um, as I say, uh, the disclaimer does apply, which is, this is just, what I use for my trading. Um, it may or may not work for you. And yeah, you may have to tweak it if you have to, but um, yeah, so use at your own risk. And then lastly, um, I do want to show you uh, a take profit simulator. This is something, um, this answers a pretty big question a lot of people have, right? Because sometimes you may ask them, when should I take profit, right? Um, when should I take profit? Um, if, I, if I take too early, um, I how much am I gonna lose out on? And, and I just want to show you like uh, about like six different scenarios, right? I'm not saying any of them are the best, but I do want to address some of the questions that people have about oh, what happens if I take it out. So let's say um, you found like a coin, right? You buy in and you know that this coin will, will um, double, right? It will double 
it'll double like uh, every cycle, right? And it'll, it'll double, triple, maybe 10 next 20 eggs, whatever, right? So, so like this, let's say you put in a thousand dollars and you give yourself a rule. Every time it two X's, I take 50% out. And you can see right here, um, you buy in a thousand, it's worth a thousand. And a few months later, it two X's, right? What happened when it two X's? Um, you take 50% out, right? As, and after taking 50% out, you still have a thousand dollars in play, right? So, so the, the total value is about uh, two thousand dollars, and this should be not profit taken, but it should be uh, total value minus. This should be total value minus this, right? This should be you should you shouldn't be at a loss right now. And then let's say suppose it two x's again, right? It two x's again, and and it goes from, remember how you have a thousand, after you, take, you took a thousand dollars, you still have a thousand in play, right? This thousand dollar becomes $2,000. You take some profit, which is 50%. You go back down to a thousand in play, right? And then like two X's again, right? Let's say by third cycle, two X's again, right? You take in a thousand dollars and then basically like over course of eight cycles, assuming that it does like go like two X that many times, right? You can by this calculation, you can see that you have about like you've taken about like eight thousand dollars in profit, and you still have a thousand dollars in play. So that in total adds up to about nine thousand dollars, compared to someone who did not take any profit, right? You would have missed out on two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars with this strategy. And whether this is good or not, I'm. This is just an illustration of what could happen. I'm assuming that the coin you bought is going to get this 256x. It's most likely not going to like go that big. It most likely may go, go to up to about like 8x, 16x. We have seen like instances of like 60x or 100x. Um, some of you may have heard of the coin, uh, the coin of Ave. They have gone through like a hundred x, and these are possible, but um. You should not expect like any coin to be like that. It's more like that. It's more like I'm um, like you have to like be in like a couple hundred coins just to get like one or two that can do like a hundred x. So and then another example. Uh, this is um another rule. You take profit at every three x. Right? Every time every three x is, you take your profit. And same thing right here, right? By the time it goes to like five cycles, or if the coin like two hundred fifty x is right. You get you have this much profit taken, and then compared to what's in play, you have about sixty three k. But you're still like uh, you you miss out from someone who has been hodling like one hundred seventy nine k. Right, but this is all on based on the most optimistic situation, meaning it doesn't crash, doesn't go to zero, like you don't get scammed out, you don't lose a password, right? Because most likely it you may have a crash at about like 40x, 20x. For Bitcoin, it was 20x, right? So, but this is more for like long-term play. And the same thing here, this is what happens if you four, if you take out a quarter every 4x, right? You break even the moment uh, the moment you take out um, your initial investment uh, at at the 4x mark, right? And that you lose less at the same time. Like the question is, is your coin going to go all the way up to 256x, right? And then I'd also try a two other scenarios, right? What happens if I just 10x, right? Oh, not 10x, right? right? Just take 10% every time it doubles, right? And based on calculation, uh, you break even at about like, at about 8x, when eight when it um, increases by eight fold, eight times, eight folds, right? You break even and you do miss out on, like you do miss out on a lot less. Like if it does go f up to the full, like 256 cycles, you do miss out on less. All right, but yeah, and it comes down to like, like you have to balance like a risk and reward, right? And the same thing right here, you take out 20% every two X. Uh, but yeah, but I'll be sharing this, uh, this table. It, 
alongside with uh, the portfolio, uh, these templates for you guys um, by email. So you guys can have some fun with these tables and try it out and decide like what is the best uh, take profit strategy because I do advocate. I, I know a lot of people here, they say, uh, like people in some of the groups, they say, oh, you don't take profit. Diamond hands, selling is for weaklings. But I do feel that um, like at the end of the day, like paper profit is not really profit. You do have to take some money out of it. And the whales are doing it the traders are doing it. And I personally don't think there's anything wrong. Like you put in money, you should take some out. Like, no. And and the market will dictate whether it's a good idea or not, right? You can imagine that the guy who paid like 10,000 Bitcoin for pizza, right? Like he missed out on, on a lot, but at the same time, like he found joy in eating the pizza. And sometimes at the end of the day, like you have to ask yourself like why you're in the crypto space. What are you saving for, right? Are you saving for retirement? Are you saving to like for a nice vacation for a family? Are you saving for a lifestyle? You have to ask yourself because it can be easy to like get too deep into the crypto space and lose track of your why. And when you do lose track of your why, you're no different than, so I like to use the term like a crypto zombie, like someone who's just chasing after the next zero. You lose track of why you're in this. You lose track of everything. Um, maybe your family hates you now because you don't spend time with them. And like a lot of us, we are in this space for a reason. And I do recommend you, I like, encourage you guys to don't lose sight of that why, right? Keep track of the why so that you can come back to it. That when you do make that money, right? You can take profit. You don't have to close everything. You can just take the, take profit on the amount you need it and enjoy life. Because you only have one life. I mean, I know the people on Wall Street, but they like to say like YOLO. Yeah, and it's true. You only live once. And, and because you only live once, you should also enjoy it. Enjoy your life because... But if you miss out on it, right? If you miss out on it, if uh, if your family hates you, if your spouse leaves you, and you're now facing like a child custody cases, um, I don't think we're, that's a life that a lot of you would want to live. So I'm just gonna wrap up the meeting first, right? Um, then we can open up the floor because it's close to yeah, it's close to the two hour mark, and I know some of you, some of our viewers from the East Coast is getting closer to midnight for you guys. So yeah, so if you guys have might just help, right? I just know that um, we are a community, um, and I like to show that I'm um, like if you want to go fast, you can go alone. But if you want to go far, it's always good to get to um to go together because as a community, we will be covering other topics. Um, we're going beyond just trading and investing. Like we want to cover other topics. Let's say as what Charlie mentioned, um, NFTs, um, like non fungible tokens, right? So these these are like like uh, tokenized objects like on the internet. Like you can buy like properties, you can buy like uh, digital properties online. And sometimes these properties could go up in value. So that's the exciting thing, right? And yeah, so this is just uh, some, these some resources for us. Um, we have a, a website, uh, I share my like observations, my lessons learned and other useful tools. Um, if you, want to get onto Binance, right? Um, we do have uh, the community link, right? Which is uh, onehourinvesting.com slash Binance. Um, any, any funds that that get, um, I guess, uh, sent over as a referral um, by Binance, and we will be putting it into, into the demos that we'll be doing in the future. Right? And then there's also the one for US. If you're from US, you can use uh, Binance.us. Uh, this is uh, Charlie's code. And you... Yeah, and he'll be doing some demos too as well in the future for anyone from in the US. And then if you want to co-storage, we do have a ledger too, which I'll be I'll be sharing um, in an email later on all these links. But um, yeah, finally, I do want to share this post from Reddit. Um, so this was a Reddit post I found. Um, this was, um, uh -oh. I don't know the person, but I was very, but I'm happy for this guy, how he found his why. Uh, he started off as a taxi driver, right? wasn't doing that well, but he discovered crypto, right? One of his customers told him about crypto and and he started with um, just a small amount, 250 euros worth of Bitcoin. And he was dollar cost averaging for like eight years. And now he has a lot of money. He's able to retire. And he said that um, 
he he wants to retire and he's actually retiring on like one month before his 40th birthday he's able to spend the rest of his life like enjoy enjoying the like, time with his family and here's a crazy thing like he didn't like he didn't have to like borrow money or like do anything crazy right he just took the money that he was spending on cigarettes he was a chain smoker smoking like 15 a day he took the money he would have spent on cigarettes bought bitcoin with it and by doing so he's able to like he was able to become uh, wealthy and healthy by, by quitting smoking so yeah and he he's able to attain his why and this is my goal for all of you guys uh, to to achieve your financial goal and experience life so yeah so this is just uh yeah so this is just a uh, summary of like what we are about and if you guys have i find this helpful um, we invite you come back on um, every two weeks as we do have gatherings every two weeks and 